Hey, this is Mr. T with another sheet metal ductwork fabrication project. Today we're going to make a radial throat and heel 90 degree elbow. So our sides are going to be a 4 inch radius inside for the throat and a 4 by 4 square elbow. So we've done our calculations and got our cut sheet. So we need two cheeks, throat, and a heel. And I'll get into the heel and throat dimensioning after. Um, so any layout, we're going to start bottom left, work our way left to right, bottom to top. So first dimension over from the left, I have one quarter inch. I'm not going to draw that line all the way up. I'm just going to draw a line slightly. Next, I have a half and a one for my small end and big end. And again, I'm not drawing those lines all the way across. So that gives me this intersection to stop. So my first dimension is four inches. That's the size of my dot. So I'm going to measure across four inches on my line. Create my intersection. Use a combination square. I'm just going to draw a slight line, maybe a couple inches long, for a reference point. So again, from this line to my next intersection, I have again four inches. That's the size of the radius of the throat. And again, I'm going to draw about a two inch long line. If I did it right, I should end up with an inch and a half left over, which I do. So now starting from the bottom, my first dimension up is going to be an inch and a half again. So starting from the bottom, I got an inch and a half. And again, my next two dimensions are four and four. So I'm going to mark those while I'm doing it. And again, I'm just going to use my combination square. And draw a line a couple inches long. So my center for the radius is at an inch and a half. So what that's going to give me is actually a half inch flat at the end of my radius on the heel and the throat. That dimension could vary. It could be no flat, or it could be two inches, three inches, four inches, or more of flat on the end of my duct. So again, I'm doing just half and half. So I have an invisible inch and a half perpendicular. That's where all my radius start and end. So my intersection isn't at the at my big end, small end. My intersection is actually in a half inch. And again, that's that flat half inch that I have on both ends. So using a, I'm going to use a gravity punch. So you could use a scratch all, uh, a prick punch, create my center point. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my quarter inch on the inside on the throat. I already have that on the outside for the heel. I'm just going to add that on the inside for my throat. Now I'm going to do the same on this side. Last again, on, I have my half and one on this side for my big and small one. So I have all my lines and intersections drawn to now start creating my arcs. So now I have to draw my arcs. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use dividers for the throat and trammels for the heel. Before I draw the arc, I'm going to set my dimension and I'm going to make sure that matches on both sides, which it does, so I'll draw my arc. And I'm going to do the same thing for the extra quarter inch, which will be the flange return for my Pittsburgh lock. And again, my arcs are starting and stopping at this inch and a half perpendicular. I'm going to do the same. just using trammels for my heel. And make sure they match. And draw that off. Now all I would have to do is add my 45 degree angles on my small and big end. I'm going to notch this out square. So now I have my part all laid out. I'm going to use bevel shear to cut out my heel and throat. There is a video on my page for using bevel shear, but we could use right and left hand snips, whatever we need to use to cut our radius out. So I have both my cheeks cut out. So next I would have to do my heel and throat. Um, a few ways to calculate them. I could set dividers to an inch and step off my heel and throat to get that dimension. Um, obviously, if you're using CAD, you can get that dimension. The long way, math always works. So to get the length of a heel and throat for a radial elbow, you take the diameter times pi and divide it by 4. So in this case, our radius is 4. We would make our diameter 8. So we take 8 times pi, get 25.12, divided by 4, I get 6.28 uh, 6 or 6 and a quarter. But then I would have to add all my extra dimensions, whatever my flat is, whatever my small and big end. That would only give me the length of the radius. But again, you could always do that. Again, pi times the diameter, divided by 4. So we've done our calculations and made our part. So next would be forming. So I'm going to lock form. My heel and throat is my next step. So next we're just going to lock form. Our heel and throat. So also while I'm at the lock form machine, I'm going to create my, I'm going to do the, the throat with our flaming attachment and I'll do the heel with the easy edger. So when we're using the flaming attachment, we have to pre-bend our stock. You just take a pair of pliers, locking pliers, in this case, and I'm going to bend up, I'm going to pre-bend my quarter inch bend up to about 45 degrees, there's a notch where it starts. I want to make sure it fits in that notch. So again, I'm going to do that to both of my pieces. So I 
back on the, the throat flange. My machine's already preset to 24 or 26 gauge. Then into the notch, get my piece to start. And I form the throat flange. To form the heel flange, I'm going to utilize our easy edger. So using the easy edger, we have a shoulder on the die. That's where our piece has to sit. So I want to make sure it's up against that shoulder, tighten slightly, and nice and slow. I'm going to form my piece up partly. I'm not trying to go 90 right away. I'm just going slightly. Got a, a little bit of pressure on the die to preform my piece. Once I have my piece preformed, now I can tighten up on the die. But I'm actually going to do both pieces before I make an adjustment. So again, I'm manipulating my piece, I'm rotating my piece to keep it against that shoulder. I've created my free bend. So now, make a final adjustment. Roll my piece in again, it pretty much is going to hold right in that start that I did with my free bend. So now I can get a 90 inch flange. No, excuse me, 90 degree flange. And again, I'm just going to repeat the process on my other piece. So again, instead of making adjustment, 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 I've made an adjustment. Free bend both pieces, made my final adjustment, and then create my heel and throat flange. Next is going to be rolling my heel and throat. So next we have to do our rolling on our roll forming machine. I'm going to use the cheeks to help roll to the right dimension for my heel and throat. The other thing I've done, I've taken some scrap, same thickness material, 26 gauge, and I've put it in the Pittsburgh lock. What that's going to do is not allow the machine to squish that completely together so I still can get my flange in there. So I'm just sacrificing a piece of scrap, same thickness, to take up the space that will be my flange. So we've adjusted our machine. We're going to start with my heel. Again, I'm going to roll. Flip my piece, roll again, and we'll make adjustments to get our piece to the right side, right radius. Make an adjustment, roll, flip my piece, roll again. So we're not exactly quite there. We have a slight gap, so I'm going to make one more adjustment. my piece one last time, hopefully it'll match. So I have just a slight bit more, but that's okay, I can push that and I'll come right out. If anything, I want to slightly overroll them, I'd rather slightly overroll than underroll. So my heel was rolled up. All that means is all the lines that I've done, I'm going to form it in that direction. My throat, I have to roll down. So all that's going to mean is my lines are showing. I'm just going to flip it over to roll it the opposite way. Now again, I, I rolled my heel first because I had a larger radius. So I can just continue with my rolling for the throat. 
So again, just making the adjustments and finishing up by rolling. And one side flip roll from the other, hopefully keeping our piece nice and straight and even roll. Again, check it to my cheek and it matches. We're good to go. Next step will be assembly. And last will be assembly. And again, I've sacrificed some scrap to basically take up what's going to be my flange for my heel and throat. So I still have space in that lock, in that Pittsburgh lock, to, put my, to receive my flanges. So whenever I put stuff together, I always stop with the heel or throat to one of my, to the cheek. Get that to start. Use the seam center. and repeat the process. So now that I have one side together, I'm just going to repeat the process. But I always do one side complete first with the heel and throat into the cheek. Um, I find it always holds the shape best. To get my fitting together. that all tacked over, can't go anywhere. Now it's a magic of television. All we have to do is finish hammering over our Pittsburgh locks and we have our completed 90 degree radial throat elbow.